Okay, what I'm showing you today is I promised I would do some videos on printing without a press. And I'm going to go back to the basics, because the basics where I started from. Um, when I started out, I didn't have a studio. I basically had the kitchen table, and when we were doing anything, I had to put everything away. So my setup all fit in one of those under-the-bed boxes, the ones, the big ones that you use for um, putting your, your um, Christmas wrap rolls and stuff in. I still have that box. It's actually now got Christmas wrap in it, but... But that's, we had a, when I got out of the Army, we had a one-bedroom apartment, and that's what I had to do to be able to work at home. I was going to college at the time, so I could work at school, too, but I, I just love printmaking, so I did stuff at home, too. I'm going to show you, basically, um, the setup to start. Now, this, you've got to keep things clean, so put down a newspaper where you're going to be your workspace, or I've got that lovely roll that a friend of mine gave me of craft paper that... Oh my goodness, it's so, it's so handy. And I've, I rolled, put that out. Now the second layer, that's going to be my, it's actually going to be my printing surface, is one of these chopping mats I got from the dollar store. They come two for, well, the $1.25 store now. They're 11 by 14, which is plenty big enough for small prints. And, uh, you know, when you get them, when you mess them up or accidentally cut them or something, you get a new one. $1.25, it's not bad. I think I have two packages over there. I keep them, when I see them there, I'll, I'll pick up two. So I have that. Now, you need a roller. You don't need an expensive one, but don't buy one of those foam rollers. Those are not any good. You want a, a nice, hard roller. Either slightly soft or the harder ones, but get a piece of cardboard, the width of your roller. Get a piece of aluminum foil. And we're going to, as you can see, I started this before I realized I wanted to film it. You put a piece of aluminum foil over the top of it. I'm trying to get it taut. And I'm going to tape it, if I can get this tape off. Believe it or not, I think this is one of those easy peel rolls. Which it is, the first time. I just need a small piece to start. Of course it is not peeling like it's supposed to. I'm just so I can pull this side taut. And then just tape it down the rest of the way. If you can get any tape, my tape is not working. I got some of this though. This is artist tape. And I just want to get it taped down flat. Okay. And that is what you are going to roll your paint on to get a nice surface. Could have been a little bit wider, but uh, earlier I was using a smaller brayer when I picked this out. All right, and put that to the side. Now the next thing you're going to do is, what size prints do you want? Now I'm using, it was easy just to take the copy paper. Actually, it's um, inkjet printer paper. And I, it was eight and a half wide, so I just cut eight and a half inch squares. That's what I figured I'd do for this. I cut a bunch of pieces. Now once you decide that, if you want to have prints with nice borders, if you're just playing around to start, then don't worry about it. But this is just your basic uh, scrapbook paper. And what I did was, this I actually made for the 9x9 prints that I'm doing on something else. But I also made it the paper size for if you were doing the full size 11 by 11 and for the inner side is 7 by 7 so depending on how big a border do you want if you cut your paper 11 by 11 you're going to get a two inch border for your 7 by 7 print with this if you only want a one inch border cut your paper 9 by 9 this little inner line is the eight and a half by eight and a half line I just drew that one up because that's not usually what I do, but 
just so I could do this project. Now, as you can see, what you're going to have to do, you're going to put your ink out on this. And you're going to have to ink a place big enough to do this. So what I usually do, even if I've got, even if you got newsprint underneath it, it'll still work, is take something, but just a regular pencil, and about where you think you're going to be inking out your stuff, draw your line of the size that you the inner side your print's going to be. So you can see it through this when you're inking. You can see it through your printing mat when you're inking, so you'll know that you've inked up enough to do your picture. That's important. Now I just drew something, I mean almost childish, very childish, just something simple so that I could show you this process. Um, I drew it on a sheet of paper that's the size that I'm going to print, but a little tiny bit bigger so that I can tape it down. Got a little tape room there. Now, what I would do now okay I'm going to get this set up so that I can show you the setup before you print. Now, I'm going to line this page up with the top of my mat. I can see through the paper. This is a this is a simple drawing that I've done that I'm going to transfer to. And I'm just centering it on my page here. Right about there. Okay. And I'm going to And I'm going to flip that up, make sure I don't get it in the ink that's up there. I'm going to flip that up. Now I'm going to take a piece of paper and see this paper is not um, square, but I'm going to line it up. If I lined it up where it's, squ where it's square to this line here, then I can cut off the excess later. So I'm going to do it just so that I know it's square. I can cut the appropriate border later. This, pa this paper has not been cut to size. Normally you would cut it to size. All right, and I'm going to make sure it's nicely leveled. I'm just going to put a little tape at the top, just a little bit. where I don't have it on that other one so that I can lift these up. I want to be able to lift them up and look at them it, just a little. I don't need to do it a lot. Just a little lift so that I can look at them and see where they lie. There we go. Now see, I'm going to be able to lift these and look at them. What I'm printing. All right. Now we're going to get, I had started inking up because I was doing something else, but this is a Kua ink, so it did not dry. So I am going to ink up a goodly section to make sure I get it all in there. I'm going to take I'm going to move my ink section over. When you print, you want clean. And this is clean, relatively. Now I can see where my square is, and I'm going to lay it down right there, gently. Don't push down on it. And you can check to see that you've got it all in the ink, but once you laid it down, you probably want to leave it there. All right, now I'm going to take a pencil. And what you can do is you can take a red pencil so that you can make sure where your lines are that you've already drawn. I usually do take a colored pencil, but I don't even if I have one out here right now. I've been I've been organizing my colored pencils. 
I have too many of them. Oh, here's a purple one. We'll use this. All right, now do not put your hand, you can put your hands here where the mat is. Let me see. Let me get this a little bit better here. It never goes as far as I want it to go. Okay, you can put your hands out here, but you don't want to put your hands where there's ink underneath. So, and I'm just going to do a loose drawing. Like I said, th this is a, I did a bunch of these squared leaves, and they're actually going to end up, and I can see it ends there, so I'm going to have to end this leaf a little shorter. And I'm just doing loosely following the lines. These, um, I did a bunch of these leaves and square, and I'm going to cut them out in cardboard and make cardboard um, stamps, collagraphs. And I've got a couple different ways I'm going to do them. What I want to do is see, take these cardboard things and see how many ways I can use them. And there's a lot of ways you can use them. And I have to stop every once in a while and look up. I've got a new camera coming. There's something wrong with my sound. It keeps cutting out and I hate to do voiceover. So instead of doing voiceover, I usually lose the whole video that I taped. And I'm correcting this as I go through. If I don't like it, I do something different. Um, I usually throw them out or maybe I try and cut just that section from it. The last one, there was a middle section and I cannot find out whether it's my camera that's cutting out, my microphone, which is an inexpensive one, or combination of the two. Maybe it's the connection between the two. I don't know. I can't find out what it is. I'm going over this one again. Now if you want to shade, I'm going to shade in the leaves just a little. I'm not pressing down hard at all. Just touching it to the leaf just to make it a little darker than the background. There will be plate tone that will come up from the plate, which is what makes these prints, I think, so interesting. And your technique on shading in, if you do back and forth, if you do swirls, it will show up. So you want to be somewhat consistent. But So I have a new camera and a new microphone coming in. I didn't know which it was. I couldn't fix it. I figure I'm all I'm 81 82 videos down. It's time I upgraded a little. Cuz I did. I honestly bought the cheapest camera on Amazon that was for um doing YouTube videos. Cuz I didn't know how long this was going to last, but I didn't understand how much I was going to love it either at the time. Now you can pick it up at any time and look and see what you got, but you got to be really careful. There's something sticky on the outside of this. I'm going to have to fix that. But see, can you see? You can see a little bit. And I'm going to go back through and accentuate some lines in the leaves. Some detail and then we'll be done. But I've got, I think I did eight of these squared off leaf that I'm going to do in different ways. And uh, so I figured this would be a good way to show this. I'm going to be gel printing them with, well, I might actually not just gel print them. I might use this as the, this, um, Two more simple homemaking with stuff you can get really cheaply. Printing at home videos I want to do in the next couple weeks. Because believe it or not, you do not need a big studio. You can be an artist without leaving your house. 
And it's nice. My friend has her own studio, and that's nice. I mean, I have this backyard. It's one of those barn buildings. This is my studio. And that's nice because it keeps all the junk. Well, it keeps most of the junk out of the house. But all my art supplies are not out here. Some are in the house. And I want to make this a little bit thicker. And a little bit less defined by scribbling back and forth. And I think I'm done. So, let's pull up the picture. Yeah, there's some sticky stuff on this frame. I've used this frame more than once. And I'll show you what you got. There you go. See how the, you can do shading. Now, if I had to push down real hard, like you can see in this top leaf, I push down a little harder, you can get it really dark. And the nice thing is you've got this done. You can leave that picture there. You can just ink over this again, do another one. Ink over it again, do another one. You can do one after the other. But, so you can see what you can do with it. And I've seen people pull this up. So we'll do that. I don't like it, but it's too dark for me. Is they just pull up what's left. I'll go over it nice and flatly and then pull it up. Yeah, see, it doesn't work for me. But I've got a fuzzy enough line so I can go in there with color pencil and uh, get the rest of that out of there. Like I said, you just ink back over it. You, your ink is still on the thing. Ink over, do another one. Ink over, do another one. You can use the same thing or you can pull up the border and stick another picture to it and see if I was going to use this I would hmm, I'm going to put this aside keep in mind that this has got ink on it and I'm going to clean my hands immediately before I touch anything else which I should have actually between the inking once you get it laid down and you're ready to put your paper down clean your hands or you'll end up with ink on the side of your paper. Now what I would do, I would just put cut a frame, cut that with a frame around it. Dipped it in the ink. And I like that. And you can do it in different colors. If you leave this picture in and then flip it up, leave it in the frame, keep the frame and the picture together, frame picture and, and paper you're printing on, put it to one side and then you can roll out a different color and do it again do like I could come back with little stars or something around it with a different color but that's all I'm doing on that one for today let me show you real quick cleanup this is these are baby wipes plain dollar store baby wipes I'm gonna get the majority up with one I usually need two or three to, but I'm going to grab a dried one that I've left sitting here from before, get even more of it up. And you can use paper towels with soap and water work just as well. The one thing about a cool, it cleans up really nice. And that faint gray is going to stay there. But that's not going to affect your print. All right. Cleaned off. Put to one side. That same wipe I just used. Cleaning up my... Ink I had spread out. Like I said, that was enough ink to do a couple more pictures. You don't need very much. That's why I, I did, and I know Akua is the most expensive, but I will put a link to it because I really think you'll have less frustration if you have good ink. The rest of the, the rest of the process, you can get away with a cheaper paper. You can get away with 
a lot of things. A, I put a, a basic brayer. I think it actually might even be this one. I put a link to a basic brayer. You don't need anything fancy there. Um, but the ink, I think, is important. I would, I you try, you could try it with your acrylic inks. Yes, people do have success with it, but I have far more success with the Akua, or I would suggest Akua or speedballing. Now this is like five times more expensive. For two ounces of this, it's like nine dollars, and. Uh, I think you get six or seven ounces of the speedball for about the same price. So, and the speedball works good too. But I would suggest this if you can afford it. I've got the paper on there, which is like seven ninety for a hundred sheets. The uh, brayer I think was like nine dollars, and this was like eight ninety for two ounces. So it's not a real expensive hobby to start. You should have like newsprint in the house that you can use, Reynolds wrap and cardboard to make your little inking pad station. So it's a, it's inexpensive to get started and you can do some wonderful things. Once you once you practice with the pressures and your technique, you can do some really intricate complicated prints this way. And you can do them over and over again by rolling it out again, do it and again. You don't have to and all of this stuff will fit in one of those I'd say 16 by 16 by 18 boxes that you can get and slide it under the bed um, so that it'll be out of the way. So you can put all your stuff up in one box. You don't have to have a studio. You don't have to have a separate room. You can be an artist with a kitchen table and a few supplies or a kitchen counter and a few supplies. That's all you need. So. I hope, so you, I hope you try this. I hope I inspired you to try it. It's simple. It's easy. And uh, please put a like on my video if you like it. Put a subscribe. I'm going to make a, a lot more of these videos on what you can do with simple supplies at home. So thank you very much and you have a lovely day.